Be reverent and attentive. Peace be with you. With you and your spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to Christ our Lord. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead man's bones and every kind of filth. Even so, on the outside you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evildoing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the memorials of the righteous, and you say, If we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have joined them in shedding the prophets' blood. Thus you bear witness against yourself that you are the children of those who murdered the prophets. Now fill up what your ancestors measured out. And glory to God forever. Glory to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So anytime we hear in the gospel the words of Jesus saying, Woe to you, it's really a rebuke. Jesus is literally rebuking the people that he's saying, Woe to you. So he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees in this gospel from Matthew. And he says something very interesting. He says to the Pharisees, Woe to you, you whitewashed tombs, because you appear beautiful on the outside, but inside you are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. And then he tells them again, and now the Pharisees and scribes are supposed to be these holy people, these very righteous people. And he says, Woe to you, on the outside you appear righteous, on the outside you appear holy, but on the inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. So I've been praying today about what Jesus means by this, and I was thinking this morning about what on the outside looks good, what on the outside looks beautiful, what on the outside looks perfect and awesome, but on the inside is something completely different and maybe even distorted. And the one thing that came to mind right away was social media, right? Wow, social media, what trash! I mean, social media is honestly the devil's playground, honestly. It really is. And right, there's good that can come out of social media, right? There's a lot of good that can come from social media, but I think there's more evil and sin that comes from social media than good. And I don't even know where to start with social media, right? You can talk about lust, you can talk about just fake lives, you can talk about hypocrisy, you can talk about just seeking attention, but the one thing that I think the Lord has really been speaking to my heart today about social media is the sin of comparison. The sin of comparison. And I think this is something that we all fall into very easily through social media. And in reality, my brothers and sisters, we are ruining our community, we are ruining our faith by this very sin of comparison. We are. Because we see what people post, and we see what people are doing, and we compare our lives to them. And we think that people's lives are just perfect because, oh, they're in Cancun every single week, or they're throwing these extravagant parties. But in reality, what's behind that? Is it real? And I'm not saying that everyone is fake on social media, but is it real? Just because you have, are sitting on a cabana in Cancun, and you're going to these big parties, does it mean that you're really happy? Does it mean that you know God? and that you have faith. Don't compare yourself to what you see on social media because ultimately what we're doing when we compare ourselves is we go to an even bigger sin which is trying to outdo one another. Look at our weddings, our birthday parties, our gender reveals. In reality, when we fall into comparison, we are just trying to outdo one another outdo one another. And I think 
It is these sins of comparison and outdoing one another as to why so many Chaldeans are starting to grow marijuana. Because we can't keep up. We can't keep up with the lives of the people that we're following. We can't keep up with the extravagance, the luxury that they're living, so we have to sin in order to live like them and to outdo them. We cannot fall into the sin of comparison. We cannot fall into the sin of outdoing one another. And so what must we do? First, be thankful. Second, be content. Third, be satisfied. Fourth, be simple. We've lost that whole thing of simplicity. We don't know how to be simple anymore. And what is simplicity? It's simply this, to imitate Christ. And how do we imitate Christ? By his words in the gospel. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Jesus didn't say, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow every single one else out in the world, and follow what everyone else is doing, and follow what everyone is doing in your family, what everyone's doing in your circle of friends, follow them. No, he says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Imitate me, not the world. We have two options in this life. If we fall into comparison, and if we fall into outdoing one another, ultimately we're racing towards hell. That's what we're doing. When we compare ourselves and try to outdo one another, we are racing towards hell. But when we are thankful, when we are content and satisfied with what God has given us, when we are simple, we live this life as a journey towards heaven. That's what we're called to. So don't get caught up in what you see out there because the only thing that matters is what's about to happen right here. And so let's receive him and let's be thankful for what he's given us. Amen. Amen. Let us together.